In this profound treatise, Nichiren Daishonin unveils a startling revelation about the true object of worship in Buddhism, a revelation that has remained hidden for over 2,200 years since the passing of Shakyamuni Buddha. As the great teacher cautions, the ideas contained within are both deeply critical and potentially unsettling. Yet, for those with unwavering faith and an open mind, it offers a transformative understanding that can propel one's practice to new heights. Nichiren begins by acknowledging the gifts he has received from his followers, a summer kimono, ink sticks, and writing brushes. He then warns that the treatise he is about to share contains much criticism and few answers, but insists that it is a matter of the utmost importance, one that is intrinsically tied to the very purpose of his advent in this world. The Daishonin imparts a solemn instruction. This treatise should only be shared with those who are strong in faith and open-minded, and even then, it should not be read by more than three or four people at a time. This sense of gravity and caution underscores the profound and potentially unsettling nature of the revelations to come. Nichiren then reveals that the ideas contained within this treatise have never been heard of before in the over 2,200 years since the Buddha's passing. This is a bold and startling claim, one that immediately captivates the reader and heightens the sense of anticipation. We are about to bear witness to a teaching that has been concealed for centuries, and Nichiren is entrusting us with its unveiling. The Daishonin's words also allude to the persecution he has faced, stating that he is now expounding this teaching, at the beginning of the fifth half millennium, when the time is ripe for its propagation. This suggests that the true object of worship has been suppressed and obscured, and that Nichiren is now breaking through the darkness to illuminate this vital teaching. With this backdrop established, Nichiren delves into the heart of the matter, the true object of worship in Buddhism. He writes with a sense of conviction and urgency, as if imparting a profound secret that has the power to transform the lives of his readers. At the core of Nichiren's revelation is the startling assertion that the true object of worship is not the numerous Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that have traditionally been the focus of Buddhist practice. In the 2220-odd years since the Buddha's passing, he declares, the ideas contained in the heart of this treatise have never been revealed before. This is a radical departure from the teachings that have predominated in Buddhism for over two millennia. Nichiren is challenging the very foundations of established Buddhist thought, and he does so with a steadfast confidence that can only come from a deep, personal realization. The Daishonin then proceeds to unveil the true object of worship, the mystic law of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. This profound truth, he asserts, has been concealed and obscured, even from the greatest Buddhist scholars and practitioners. And now, at the dawn of the latter day of the law, Nichiren is entrusted with the task of revealing this essential teaching. Nichiren's words resonate with a sense of urgency and importance. He speaks not merely as a teacher, but as a messenger entrusted with a vital revelation that has the power to transform the very foundations of Buddhist practice. His tone is both critical and compassionate, as he recognizes the gravity of the teaching he is about to impart. The Daishonin goes on to elucidate the profound significance of the mystic law, drawing upon his deep understanding of Mahayana Buddhism and the Lotus Sutra. He explains how Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is the ultimate and absolute object of worship, the embodiment of the Buddha's enlightenment and the essence of all Buddhist teachings. Nichiren's exposition is marked by a masterful weaving of scriptural passages, philosophical insights, and practical guidance. He skillfully navigates the complexities of Buddhist doctrine, distilling the essence of these teachings into a clear and accessible message. At the heart of Nichiren's teaching is the idea that the mystic law, expressed in the Dai Moku of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, is the true and ultimate object of worship. He challenges the traditional focus on Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, asserting that these beings are merely manifestations of the mystic law itself. The Daishonin's words carry a sense of profound revelation and urgency. He seems to recognize the gravity of the teaching he is imparting, and the potential impact it can have on the lives of his followers. There is a palpable sense of excitement and anticipation, as if Nichiren is unveiling a long-hidden secret that holds the key to unlocking the true potential of Buddhist practice. Throughout the treatise, 
Nichiren interweaves enlightening quotes and passages from influential Buddhist figures, further reinforcing the depth and validity of his teachings. He draws upon the insights of Tiantai scholars, Nagarjuna, and even Shakyamuni Buddha himself, to build a compelling case for the supremacy of the mystic law as the true object of worship. The Daishonin's tone is both authoritative and compassionate. He speaks with a sense of conviction that stems from his own profound realization, yet he also acknowledges the potential unsettling nature of his revelations. Nichiren recognizes that he is challenging long-held beliefs and practices, and he urges his readers to approach this teaching with an open mind and unwavering faith. As the treatise unfolds, Nichiren's words take on an increasingly urgent and transformative quality. He seems to be imparting not just a philosophical or doctrinal teaching, but a vital truth that has the power to radically shift the very foundations of Buddhist practice. The true object of worship, he insists, is not to be found in distant Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, but in the profound and all-encompassing mystic law of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Nichiren's revelation is a call to action, a summons for his followers to awaken to the boundless potential that lies within the mystic law. He urges them to abandon the limited and obstructive practices of the past, and to embrace the true object of worship that can lead them to the heights of enlightenment. In this profound treatise, Nichiren Daishonin stands as a beacon, illuminating a path that has been obscured for centuries. His words resonate with a sense of urgency and importance, challenging us to shed the shackles of traditional Buddhist thought and embrace the transformative power of the mystic law. For those with the courage and conviction to heed his call, this treatise holds the promise of a profound awakening, one that can propel us towards the realization of our inherent Buddhahood. In his groundbreaking treatise, Nichiren Daishonin boldly proclaims that the true object of worship in Buddhism is not the numerous Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that have traditionally been the focus of Buddhist practice. Rather, the Daishonin asserts that the ultimate and absolute object of worship is the mystic law of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. This revelation represents a radical departure from the teachings that have predominated in Buddhism for over 2,200 years since the passing of Shakyamuni Buddha. Nichiren's words carry a sense of profound importance, as he unveils a truth that he claims has been concealed and obscured, even from the greatest Buddhist scholars and practitioners. At the heart of Nichiren's teaching is the idea that the mystic law, expressed in the Dai Moku of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, is the true embodiment of the Buddha's enlightenment and the essence of all Buddhist teachings. He challenges the traditional focus on various deities and celestial beings, asserting that these are merely manifestations of the mystic law itself. Nichiren's exposition on the supremacy of the mystic law is a masterful synthesis of scriptural passages, philosophical insights, and practical guidance. He skillfully navigates the complexities of Mahayana Buddhism, distilling the essence of these teachings into a clear and accessible message. The Daishonin draws upon the insights of influential Buddhist figures, such as Tiantai scholars and the great philosopher Nagarjuna, to build a compelling case for the primacy of the mystic law. By weaving these authoritative voices into his treatise, Nichiren lends an air of legitimacy and depth to his radical assertions. Nichiren's words are marked by a sense of urgency and importance. He seems to recognize the gravity of the teaching he is imparting, and the potential impact it can have on the lives of his followers. There is a palpable excitement and anticipation, as if the Daishonin is unveiling a long-hidden secret that holds the key to unlocking the true potential of Buddhist practice. In Nichiren's view, the traditional focus on revering Buddhas and Bodhisattvas as the primary objects of worship has been a fundamental misunderstanding. He argues that these beings are not the ultimate source of enlightenment, but rather manifestations of the mystic law itself. It is the mystic law, embodied in the Dai Moku of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, that is the true and absolute object of worship. The Daishonin's treatise is a clarion call for his followers to abandon the limited and obstructive practices of the past, and to embrace the transformative power of the mystic law. He urges them to recognize that the path to enlightenment does not lie in the veneration of distant deities, but in the direct and unwavering practice of chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. 
Nichiren's words carry a sense of both authority and compassion. He speaks with a conviction that stems from his own profound realization, yet he also acknowledges the potential unsettling nature of his revelations. The Daishonin recognizes that he is challenging long-held beliefs and practices, and he implores his readers to approach this teaching with an open mind and unwavering faith. Throughout the treatise, Nichiren emphasizes the supreme and all-encompassing nature of the mystic law. He asserts that Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is not just one among many objects of worship, but the very essence of Buddhahood itself. It is the ultimate truth that transcends all other Buddhist teachings and practices. The Daishonin's revelation is a call to action, a summons for his followers to awaken to the boundless potential that lies within the mystic law. He urges them to forsake the limited and obstructive practices of the past, and to embrace the true object of worship that can lead them to the heights of enlightenment. In this profound treatise, Nichiren Daishonin stands as a bold and fearless champion of the mystic law. His words resonate with a sense of urgency and importance, challenging us to shed the shackles of traditional Buddhist thought and to fully embrace the transformative power of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. For those with the courage and conviction to heed Nichiren's call, this treatise holds the promise of a profound awakening. It offers a path forward that transcends the limitations of the past, empowering us to realize our inherent Buddhahood and to become the living embodiment of the mystic law. Nichiren's revelation is a testament to the boundless wisdom and compassion that lie at the heart of the Lotus Sutra. By elevating the mystic law to the supreme object of worship, he opens the door to a deeper and more profound understanding of the Buddhist teachings. In doing so, he invites us to embark on a transformative journey, one that can lead us to the very apex of enlightenment. As we delve into the depths of Nichiren's treatise, we are confronted with a choice, to cling to the limited and obstructive practices of the past, or to embrace the boundless potential of the mystic law. For those who have the courage to take the leap, the rewards are truly magnificent. In chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo with unwavering faith, we become the living embodiment of the true object of worship, radiating the light of the Lotus Sutra to all beings.